time management and study skills. But between time management and study skills are course skills, and it's course etiquette. So I'm going to talk about these three things in maybe the next, um, not 30 minutes, I think I can do this in about 10 or 12 minutes. And I will ask my colleagues if they come up with any ideas when I give helpful tips to just um, chime in. So the first thing is time management. You need to list everything you typically do in a day and a week and then schedule your time accordingly. Because if you're like me, besides coursework, just like you, I have to prepare for courses, great paper, so I have to chunk that out. But I like to eat, I like to exercise, I have to commute to work, I need a little, f f so you really need to chunk out the responsibilities you have so that you can give enough time to your coursework and not be doing things at the last minute. So time is only finite. How many hours are in a week? 168 hours per week. And so you want to subtract some sleep time from this too because you do need to sleep six to eight hours an evening. So when it relates to studying, how much time should you set aside for a course? So I went and looked on some syllabi. And the recommended time is that you set aside three hours for each one hour of a course. So if you have three hours credit course, how much time are you going to set aside for that course minimally? Three times three is nine. You guys are good. OK, so it's about nine hours in a three credit hour class. And that's just kind of when you're prepping and reading and getting ready for course discussions. When you have a paper coming up, you need a lot more time. If you're pacing yourself and studying before the midterm, that's fine. You'll need a little more time but you're going to have to take some time to study and write papers. Those of you that are working full time, do you have personal time from work? Okay. Vacation time? Okay. You know, look at your syllabus and set off some time. So sometimes you're not going to be going on vacation all the time while you're working on your master's degree. You may be taking vacation to get homework done. It does take time. I don't think you guys can work 50 hours a week, work on your MBA, and balance family, especially when projects and tests are coming out. So time management is important. So set your priorities, listen, list them in order, and learn to say no. Dr. Castelli gave me an article the other, word, the other day that no is a tiny word, but it's hard to say no. So you've got to learn to say no to people. And you need to tell them, you know, which part of no do they not understand, the N or the O. But you've got to be selfish with your time and you want to manage it wisely. Plan your time in a planner or electronically where you get reminders. For those of you that use electronic calendars, you don't have to look at that sometimes as much as a planner. So if you're using electronic calendars, make sure you're getting something that shows up in your phone that says, you know, study time or time to stop studying. But really plan your time and manage it well. So I'm going to give you a few helpful tips on time management, and then I'm going to ask my colleagues if they have any. Um, how many commuters do we have in here? OK. So one of the things that I'm going to recommend for the people who drive to and from work to get here to campus, um, sometimes re-listen to a lecture that you've taped. If you're studying, tape the definitions and then hear it play back while you're driving to and from work. And you, that will help you. Do I have anybody that likes to exercise? Treadmill? OK. Same thing. You know, yeah. So study while you're exercising. So um, you're going to have to write papers. Don't only set aside time to write. Set a time, time to procrastinate to write. I guarantee you when you're going to write a paper, you're going to fix up your office, kind of organize your piles, run to Staples to get something. but. There's a little procrastination that all humans do before, and see, even my colleagues are saying, before you really write. So if you're going to set aside a few days to really work on your paper, give yourself about five days. You're going to procrastinate, you're going to write hard, and then you're going to think you're cleaning up and you're going to take a nap. So really think about setting aside time to, to do this right. Give yourself rewards. Um, spa, doing your social media, meeting some friends. But when you really adhere to managing your time well, give yourself a reward. It can be as inexpensive as a nap or a walk or something. Um, you know, when I have to write, I tell myself, 
I cannot check my email or text until I've written for four hours. And then I'll go check it. But how are you going to write if you're always answering a text or um, answering an email? It's really, really distracting. Um, so I'm not a student, but I have, as David said, we've got to write and publish in our careers. Um, and we do it, I think, a lot of us do it above and beyond our normal duties of we've got to put um, our students first. So everything you want to do is look at your syllabus. Some of you will have syllabi more than one. Write down when major things are due. Write down what you want to get done each month. Write down what you want to do each week, however you want, wherever you want to write it. And sometimes when you wake up in the morning, just say, I'm going to try to get these three things done today. And that's really how to best, I think, manage your time. So any advice from anybody in the room about time management? But it is really critical. Nope. Covered it all? Yes. I mm -hmm. So I'm lying. So I'm lying. I think I'm lying. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that's got the same expectations, but there's more because you have to participate in games. You can't sleep in the back of the class. Yeah, right. Yes. Well, you can do it for campus, I guess. You can. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But, mm -hmm. but so it sounds like even more time commitment to engage and, and, and post and things like that. Is that something mm -hmm. that you've that's seen true. in your experience? That, from my experience teaching online, that's true. Not only of the student, but of the faculty member, is if you, all of you are in my class, guess what, you all have to answer the questions. When you come to my class on a Wednesday afternoon, five or six of you might answer my questions. So yes, I think online requires a lot more discipline than sitting in the classroom from you. And then the faculty member has to keep up with all of you, not just the five or six students that are responding. So it is a lot more time, but you can do it in your pajamas. And if you're not really good at time management, you can get your coursework done before four and six in the morning before you take off to work. I mean because you can do it while the rest of us are sleeping. So it's really important. You, it is a little more time, but you do have some flexibility. Yes? So time, like when I'm, um, I used to work full time and then go to school. So when it was like lunchtime, or I used to be, I used to take this notebook and like this, mm -hmm. and just look at it, and then how you doing? I put it down, because they're always looking at you. So I always try to look at the, the stuff right here during, uh, during work hours. Also, if you try, you know, also the job was slow, so sometimes get my Z's on during work. So if you're tired, just make sure they're not looking, but make sure that we well, you get lunch breaks, so you should be okay. Yeah, well, I take two lunches, though. <laughs> <laughs> Eat and then read. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, study skills, I think, which will help with this lunch thing you're talking about. Yeah. And it's learning to say no. I mean, I'm a faculty member that keeps my door open. Once in, a, once in a great while, I will close my door. Once in a great while, I will close my door and shut my shades because I've got to get something done. So kind of have your level of doors open. You guys can come in any time. Doors closed, shade open. You can still come in, but when those shades are shut, not because I'm usually working on something very intense. Okay. So you want to remember that. Anything else on time management? Okay. Well, just for the online course, Brian, just double check how your, the instructor has set it up because there's usually due dates after which the assignment is turned off. Yeah. Okay, so let me talk to you about something Mina didn't ask me to talk about, but what connects time management to study skills is what I call course behavioral skills. <laughs> so um, what I want to recommend is read your course syllabus many times, okay? And usually before you sit down. Um, the worst thing if for faculty members, I got an email from somebody yesterday, I won't say who, who said, um, I've been really busy this summer. Can you tell me what's due on August 25th? Hello, read the syllabus, it's on page 8. And I thought, you know, I'll be really professional and nice. And I said, um, attach this to syllabus, because I'm thinking the person lost the syllabus but remembered something was due. I said, it's also available on Blackboard, and please look at page 8 for what's due. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, why are they asking me? <laughs> no, look at the syllabus, okay? So you don't really, that's not good behavior. Second thing is arrive a few minutes before class. Your worst case is to arrive on time. Got that? Arrive before class, worst case scenario, arrive on time. But it's really disruptive. It's going to happen if you're commuters. You'll come once in a while late. 
Um, but if you do come late, do say to the professor, my apologies, and I'm sorry I was late today. And then quietly sit down and be extremely respectful because you're already late. But my recommendation is arrive early, worst case scenario, arrive on time. Okay, these are things that we think about because when students arrive in late, this is my theory. I only need one of you in the classroom to start on time. It's not fair to the 12 students who came early on time to realize well, I've got four or five people missing. So I always have a theory that I like to start on time and end early if I can, okay? Um, I think it's good to sit in or near the front. You pay a little better attention, okay? Um, so I'm gonna just suggest that in or near the front, not always way in the back like those two guys over there, or three. I'm not saying you're the two way in the back there with the shirt and tie. <laughs> um, you know, attend all class meetings. Email the professor if you will miss a class and just briefly tell them why, not your whole story. But email them if you're gonna miss a class and tell them what you will do to be accountable. Look at the syllabus and accept the consequences of missing class, okay? It's not fair for us to manage things going on. Look at our syllabi and just accept the consequences just like you would at work or at dinner if you're late, okay? So that's your contract. Complete your readings and ask questions to the professor based on the material you need to understand. Read before class, read after class again. Is anybody in here shy? Raise your hand because I know you're shy. No. Anybody feel a little bit shy sometimes? Okay. So the shy ones is just force yourself to say, okay, I got class Monday, Wednesday. On every Monday, I'm going to try to just ask one question because I've read everything before class, right? And on Wednesday, I'm going to try answering one question. That's all I ask you guys to try to do versus not talking the entire term. It is not a good thing if I think in the class sizes we have, the professor doesn't know your name. Now, the professors have multiple sections, multiple students. So when you do come to class, you say, hi, Professor Lechner, right? Is that who you are? I'm Jackie. Just kind of say your name to them because they're thinking, what was that student's name? But they're not going to admit that to you. When you say, when you have a, say a question, say, hey, I'm Jackie, and I'm in your Monday, Wednesday class. I have a question. So just kind of let them remember your names. Okay, not all of them are very good at remembering names. Um, be attentive and engaged. Put your cell phones away and no surfing, in my opinion, unless it's to answer a question in class or to help you. Now, some faculty have policies on this, but how many of you checked a text or email at least once today? I did. Okay. Dr. Marks doesn't carry one around. Okay, but it's okay. You know, one or two discreetly, you're not, I'm being really honest, you're not going to, but if you're the one sitting there, oh, especially the clickers, you hear them clicking, that is so annoying for everybody. But you will get breaks. And just try to do what I do is turn my phone over. But if I know there's, an, like if I know my dad's in the hospital or something's going on, I might tell the professor before class, um, you know, my father's in the hospital and I'm just keeping my phone on silence in case I get a text or a message. They understand. Okay, I had a student come up and said, my wife's going to have a baby. I'm thinking, what are you doing here? You know, my Tuesday night class. He said, she said I could come to class, but, you know, my phone's on silence and I might have to step up. You know, absolutely. We, we, we know these kind of things. So really, um, some faculty will have policies. I'm going to tell you guys, just be polite and discreet. All right, you guys are all laughing, but you know what I mean. Um, doesn't this happen in meetings too? Okay, so when working with teams, everybody starts a team, happy on a team, working with a team, and it turns out perfect every single time in every single class, right? No, and at work, no. So here's my advice when working with teams. Get the work done that you committed to before the meeting and carry your weight. If you have a team member that is not carrying the weight, deal with it now, not when your grade comes in, okay? And if you 
aren't comfortable dealing with, you know, me dealing with, Mina and I are on a team, Donna's the professor, um, what should happen is I should try to deal with it with Mina now and then say, Mina, if you don't start getting when you're done, I really think we need to talk to Professor Cress. Okay? And what a professor should typically do, now sometimes you're going to get, Mina's going to go in and complain about it's me not really getting the work done. I think most of our faculty will say, go get your partner and let's work this out together. Because then we're playing she said, she said. And I'll give you, we all as professors have these experiences, but I had two students who, um, you would have thought they failed the course. I think they got B's or B pluses. So one student called me and said, you should give me the grade I earned and not the other student that. Okay. And I said, you know, grades have been assigned, posted, done. You should have came to me earlier. Literally, three days later, the other student calls. Guess what the other student said? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what? You should have given the other person <laughs> a worse grade than me. I see, because I said, I said, do you know the other student already called and tried to give me the story about you and you about him? So it's really awkward when you put us in these situations as faculty. So this is part of course behavior. Please try and deal with the student on your own right there. And if you can't, go talk to the professor, but tell the student, you know, we're going to go talk to the professor together. Okay? And sometimes you, you want a good grade, what are you going to have to do? Work for it and carry the weight. It happens. It happens at work. It happens at school. But it's kind of one of those, I call it the elephant in the room topics that I really, I saved it for the last thing on core skills is, yes, we do. You know, and I can make you guys sign agreements, and then I can ask you to wait your students' thing. But at the beginning of the team, everybody thinks, starts out 100% trusting each other. And at the end of the day, even though there's someone that didn't carry the weight, that person thinks you didn't carry the weight either. So really be proactive and professional about carrying your weight on teams and dealing with it now and not later. So um, here are my helpful tips. Approach your professor when you have read the material and have questions and be prepared for each and every class. Make sure the professor knows your name when you visit. If you miss a class, get notes from someone you know is a good note taker. Do not ask this question to the professor. Did I miss anything important, Dr. Stavros? Now, last three hours I ran the class, we talked about unimportant things. That's a huge no-no. So when you first get to your first class, sit next to someone and say, can I have your um, email address and your phone number? And if I, you know, can we exchange notes? And you need to take the initiative to the professor to how to hold yourself accountable. And don't ever say, did I miss anything important? If you are struggling in class, see the professor. If you get a poor grade, deal with it after you go home and really look at your exam or after you get home and digest your feedback. Don't go right up to the professor as soon as they hand you the paper back. Take some time to digest it. And within about 48 hours, if you thought they didn't grade you fairly or misinterpreted something, it's okay to say, you know, I looked at my exam and I think this is okay but just don't do it right then and there but don't wait three weeks to ask about a grade change faculty any other course management things that help to make your job easier or to help the students no, I think a big part of time management is managing your time in the class and, you know, I think the faculty member can tell within 10 minutes who's going to likely do well in the class and who's not there are the students who are very active. You see them taking notes. They ask questions. They're engaged. They participate. And then there's the students who just sit there. They're not, you can tell they're not taking any notes. They're just daydreaming and, and waiting for the class to end. And then when the quiz comes or the paper comes, they don't have a clue. So if you waste your time, don't waste those three hours in class, you're going to pay for it later. I, those are three extremely valuable hours. And it uh, depends on class, but uh, I always say in my class, you better be taking notes. If I'm talking, you better be writing, because that's all going to come back to you uh, and, and exams and whatnot. You just sit there and uh, you know relax after a hard day's work or something, uh, that's fine, but you're going to pay for it later. When the time comes for you to produce, you won't have a 
clue what's going on. So I would say make sure you are actively engaged uh, during those class hours. Yes. Especially in reference to people who are shy. It's like really don't be afraid to ask questions in class. I mean, if the professor's not going to know, you don't understand something or have a you know issue with something unless you bring bring, bring it to his or her attention. It's just sometimes, uh, some I mean, there have been times when I just felt like I'm stupid to to say something, but you know, it's better to just get, you know have the courage to just ask the question. So like I said, there are shy people. Okay, let's talk about study skills and call it a day. Um, so for study still skills, you need good time management. Set, a time, set aside the time to study. I already said read what you should read before class and reread after class. And you know, come up with a system that's good for you for taking notes. I always say study whatever the hard stuff is early in your study time and leave the easier stuff for the end. And they do say that um, if you study right before bed, not right before the exam, but right before bed, that you'll actually dream about org behavior and APA style, and it'll get really good into your subconsciousness. So sometimes you have something really important that you may need to memorize or really think about. It. Do that as the last thing before your prayers or something before you go to bed. But the, really, when you go to sleep, it, you will absorb the last thing that you um, have done. Um, find a study buddy. Get your work done before meeting with that partner. But you know it's kind of nice if you're taking evening classes, we've got a nice area out here, we've got nice things upstairs. Or those of you that have my Monday, Wednesday class, you have lunch afterwards. But really get somebody that you can study with and talk about after the class. Okay, this gets back to your question. Find a place to study somewhere where you're not distracted and you're away from media, which is phone and TV. It could be a library, a coffee shop, or a space that is really your place. And do not mix your play pace with your study place. And it's hard, do not, my advice is do not mix your workspace, meaning work, those of you that work, as your study place because they'll come find you, right? Yeah, <laughs> so you have, right yeah, you have to have a study place, kind of a place to go disappear to. And sometimes when I really have to get things done, I'll leave my office and I'll go into someone, I'll, I'll go into a real room where it's no one's office and I'll say, I've got to get this done. And so I'll get out of my office and go to a different place. Um, let's talk about research papers. When your professor gives out the assignment, make sure you understand exactly what the paper is about and ask questions if necessary. And start gathering, you know that December 6th machine oil session 8 to 11? You should be sleeping by then and getting your rest. This is just my opinion. Make a schedule of your research paper. Write down, just go to the library and explore topics. Then write down research time. Write down when you're going to outline your paper. I like to create outlines. Set aside time to write. Set a time to, to edit. Give yourself a few weeks. Ask a significant other, a parent, someone you know that's a good writer, not to write your paper, but to edit your paper. Several weeks before or two weeks before the papers do and if they really love you you know three days before the papers do but get someone else to read your paper and give you some critical feedback then you need more writing time more editing time and time to finalize the paper and each time you're working on your paper what's the last thing you should do before you finally save it I mean it saves throughout run a spell check okay every time all those drafts what drives me the craziest is when students don't run spell checks. Because that's the, at minimum, run your spell check each and every time that you're working on your paper before you walk away. So plan an outline. Now, as far as, take rough drafts to your professor. Not the week prior, not a few days prior. I call that, you know what the students really want? They want me to grade their paper early when they give me their paper five days before it's due. Go up to your professor if there's nothing in there about rough draft and said, you know, I understand we have something due in six weeks. If in three weeks from now I get a draft and an outline and some references, would you just look at it? You're not turning in the whole paper because then it wouldn't be a rough draft. But you're just writing a few things and you want to make sure you're on the right track and they like your outline. And you want to turn this in several weeks before a paper's due so that the professor isn't going to just drop it and say, I'm going to get this to you in 24 hours. The professor will probably say, I'll get to this next week, and that still gives you a couple weeks to have 
feedback because they got a lot on their their plate. But when you give them something like five to seven days before the papers do, you're just asking them to make sure you pass. No, no, no. To give them give them rough drafts, and and some some will will not do it. I mean, it depends on the faculty. But I think most would sit down, and if you just gave them five or six pages of an entire term paper to take a look at your outline, and they'll say, yeah, you're on the right track. This is really good. Give them, give them your references so they can say you're looking at really good um, sources. And I also think that um, in the end, before you turn in a paper, some of my colleagues might shoot me, but um, print it out, double space. I always say read it hard copy. You don't catch the errors when you're reading it on a computer. Print it out. Print it back to back, read it, sometimes read it out loud, especially if they're shorter papers, and then do some um, edits. And that's pretty much my advice on study skills. We've already talked about the honor code. Come up with your system. I'm a, I, I do it. My systems have stickies, color, color pens, so I can keep you know, track of my kids, but track of you guys, and track of my publishing, and track of this. Um, and I also think when you have a textbook, Read the preface and read the introduction. The preface tells you why you're using this textbook, what this whole course is. Everybody skips the preface. Read the preface of your books. It tells you how it is organized. Read the introduction. And then you're reading the terms going on and you're in the 11th week of class. Go back and read that introduction again because that introduction tells you what the whole course has been about again. So this is kind of my advice after um, been teaching adjunct full time for almost 20 years now and thinking, you know, how do you manage your time? What kind of course behaviors will get you what I call the halo so that you can do well? How do you study well? And then there's a handout on one page that kind of summarizes everything I said. And I cited the website. There's lots of, because I didn't want to plagiarize, there's lots of really good resources on this website if you really want to zone in on how to write better or how to do something else better. So my last advice is to you is um, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great at something. Okay, and that's a quote from a guy named Les Brown. So just kind of remember that. You don't have to be great to get started, but you got to get started if you want to be great at something. Les Brown, I don't know. L-E-S-B-R-O-W-N. I didn't want to get in trouble since it was being taped. <laughs> Any questions about Time management, course management, study skills. Just one question. Yes. Is it appropriate or can you know it or Just have to ask the faculty member. I've never said no to a student. Sometimes I told a student, let's turn off the lecture, let's turn off your your tape recorder. Or sometimes a student has said, could you turn off your tape recorder? I want to ask a question that they don't want on tape. But have you guys had any issues? I've I've always let students record. Yeah, but you should always ask okay. in case some, some faculty member is sensitive. And if they know they're being recorded, they'll be even better with their articulation. Okay, Mina? Yes. That's it. Thank you.